In my previous videos, I demonstrated how to remotely install software using Microsoft PS Exec tool and PowerShell. You will find the link to these videos below in the description. In today's video, I will demonstrate how to deploy software using Windows Group Policies or GPUs. Group Policies can be a powerful tool for managing users and computers in a Windows network. They can be used to improve security, enforce company policies, and make it easier to manage users and computers. You can take advantage of GPUs to deploy software to computers, part of your enterprise domain network. Before starting the demo, there are some prerequisites that need to be met before you can proceed with this technique. First and foremost, if you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Your support motivates me to create more content aimed at expanding your knowledge. First, the computers where you want to deploy the software must be part of a domain network. Second, you must have sufficient permissions to access and install software on the target computers. This may require administrative rights on the target computers. Third, you need a shared network folder that contains the installation files for the software you want to install. Fourth, the network must be configured to allow communication between the server where the shared folder is hosted and the target computer. This may require configuring firewalls. Fifth, the software installation files must be in a format that can be deployed using group policy. This typically includes MSI files. I assume that you already have a domain and your servers and computers are members of this domain. And you have administrator privileges that allow you to process the different deployment steps. First, I will create a shared folder on my server and grant read access to the appropriate users and computers groups. So I open Windows Explorer. I will create my folder under the C drive. I right click new folder. Let's name it deploy. Next, I will share this folder. I right click on the folder click properties, click on the sharing tab, then click on advanced sharing. I check share this folder. I will keep the share name as it is. Then I will give users and computers groups permissions. First, I will remove the everyone read access. It's not a good idea to give everyone access to this folder, so I only give access to users and computers that are member of my domain. So I will remove this group, then I will add the following groups. Domain users, I click check names to be sure I picked the right group, OK. It will be automatically granted the read access rights. Next, I will add the second group, which is domain computers. Check names. OK. All right. My two groups are now granted the read permission. I click apply. Click OK. OK. And close this form. That's it. The next prerequisite to meet is to ensure that the client computers can communicate with the server that hosts the installation files inside the shared folder. For that, I must allow incoming file access requests from the target computers on that server. To do that, I need to open Windows Firewall. I click on Control Panels, System and Security, Windows Defender Firewall. I click on Advanced Settings. Select Inbound Rules. I scroll down and search for File and Printer Sharing SMB in. It uses the TCP protocol on port 445. You may notice that there are two rules. One related to the domain profile, 
This rule applies to all computers and servers that are member of a domain. And the second one is related to the private profile. This rule will apply to all computers and servers that are on the same local network without being members of a domain, for example, under a work group. For convenient reasons, I select the two rules and enable them by right clicking and select enable rule. In my case, the rules are already enabled. The next step is to prepare the software installation package for deployment. In this demo, I will deploy Adobe Acrobat Reader to a Windows 11 workstation that's member of my domain. First, I need to download the installer package from the Adobe website. But before, I want to highlight that there are two types of installers, online and offline installers. The difference between the two is that the online installer is a small executable file that launches the installation while downloading the remaining installation files from the publisher website. Online installers are not suitable for deployment with GPUs. What we need for our deployment is the offline installer that contains all the necessary installation files we need. To download my installer, I open the browser and type in the search bar Adobe Acrobat Reader Offline Installer. Hit enter. I will scroll down and click on this link from the Adobe website. Here I need to select the operating system. I will select Windows 11. I select the language and the operating system version. I will select Windows 64 bit and click download to start downloading. After the file complete downloading, I open Windows Explorer, go to the downloads folder and here is my installer file. The installer package is an exe file I will use 7-zip to extract the MSI installer. Remember that we said that the MSI installers are suitable for remote deployments because they don't need user interaction. In fact, we don't want any pop-up window that displays on the user's computer asking him to click next to continue the setup. I already have 7-zip installed on my server, so I click to extract files. I will choose the destination folder for the extracted files. I will choose the shared folder I create earlier. Here it is. OK. And click OK to start the extraction. Perfect. Let's check the extracted files under the shared folder. Perfect. As you can see, here is the MSI file we need for our deployment. We are almost done. The final step is to create the group policy. Now the final part. We will delve into the process of creating the group policy for software deployment. Here I'm on my domain controller. So I open the server manager dashboard, then go to the tools menu and click on group policy management to open the group policy management console. Then I expand the domain container and from here I can create the GPU under the domain and this will apply the GPU to all computers member of that domain or if you want to apply the GPU to only a set of computers located under an organizational unit, you can select the organizational unit and from there you create and link the GPU. All right, I'm going to create my GPU under the domain. So I right click on the domain container and select create a GPU in this domain and link it here. I give my new GPU a name. Let's name it uh, Software Deployment. Okay, the GPU has been created. 
So I'm going to edit the GPU. So under the group, under computer configuration, I click on policies, then expand the software folder. And then I right click on software installation and create a new package. So I will browse and select my package to deploy the MSI package. But be careful when browsing for searching the package, do not select the package from the local disk, deploy and select the MSI. If I do that, I will tell the computer that wants to deploy the software that it will find the software under the C drive. And when the computer go and check under the C drive for this folder, it will not find it because this folder is located on the server. So instead, I will enter the UNC path under the form of backslash backslash, enter my server name, srvdc-01 backslash, select the shared folder, and finally, I select the MSI package. I click open and here I get the deploy software wizard. Here I need to select the deployment method. As you can see, there are three methods, published, assigned and advanced. Published is grayed out because published is only available if I choose to deploy the software under the user configuration. Published deployment will make the package available to the user under the add remove program in the control panel. And the user will have the possibility to deploy this software manually. I will show you that if I switch to the Windows 11 workstation. If I open the control panel, let's do that from the beginning. I open the control panel, click on programs, programs and features, install a program from the network. And here you can see my package available for installation and the user can run the installation to deploy the software. This is not the case when I use assigned. The assigned method will deploy the software to the computer without a user interaction. And this is what I'm going to choose for this deployment. Advanced offers some additional features, but I will choose Assigned for this demo. Okay, the deployment package has been created. And as you can see, the source of the package is under this shared folder and not on the local disk. All right, now the next step is to deploy this package. The deployment will happen when the computer starts or I can force the GPU to update and this will force the package to install. To force the GPU to apply, I can type the following command gp update slash force. Now the GPU is updating. Okay, it seems that the system need to be restarted for the package to deploy the software. So I will click yes to restart the computer. Okay, the computer has restarted and you can see that Adobe Acrobat has been successfully deployed. Now I want to talk about some mistakes to avoid when remotely deploying software on Windows computers not checking the system requirements. Before installing any software, it's essential to check the system requirements to ensure that the software is compatible with the target PC's operating system and hardware. Not testing the installation process. Before installing software remotely, it's a good idea to test the installation process on a test machine to ensure that everything works as expected. This will help you identify and fix any issues before deploying the software to production machines. Not checking for conflicts. Installing new software on a computer with conflicting software can cause unexpected problems. Before you install any software remotely, 
ensure there are no conflicts with existing software. Not communicating with the end users. When you remotely install software on a user's computer, it's important to communicate with the user to let them know what to expect. This can include letting them know when the installation will take place and what steps they need to take, if any. Not having a backup plan. Even with careful planning and testing, things can go wrong during the remote installation. It's essential to have a backup plan in place in case something goes wrong. This can include having a plan to roll back the installation or having a backup image of the computer. If you find this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more content like this. Thank you for watching.